Well, happy Saturday, everybody. Rainy one. Hope your day's going a bit better than mine started, because I had a bit of a leak in the roof, but nothing serious. But as it turns out, apparently, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but yeah, water all over there, water all over the floor, counter's all wet, everything here is soaked, water there. I knew there was an issue there, because I had some water build up there. I poked a hole in it so it wouldn't make the plastic fall, but... It never was that bad last summer. So anyway, I guess we're gonna have to figure that out. Take you guys upstairs later and we can see what the malfunction is, but after Mellow Lily last night there, I got an issue with one of my speakers down at the restaurant. So I gotta go down there and take a look at that. But I'll take you guys with me and we shall figure it out. It doesn't get taken down because the radio is on in the background, but uh, this is our culprit. Now I don't know if you guys will be able to hear this, but we'll give it a shot and we'll see. Alright, well, as with any job, you spend more time trying to find the right tool than you do doing the actual job. Well, apparently I was trying to use the wrong bit because my memory does not serve me correctly because that is the guy. Once again, need another tool. Dollar score screwdriver. I don't know if you guys are able to hear this or not, but that be the problem. Alright, so there's the one we're taking out, there's the one we're putting in. Obviously these are different makes. This is a Yorkville, obviously this is a PV. Magnet size maybe just because one's using a neodymium magnet, but I don't know. The problem with these is these are actually a really high end because you can just take out these three things. You don't have to replace the magnet, you can replace this part which is a lot cheaper than replacing the whole unit. Now, the problem with these is, and as far as I know, they haven't fixed this even with new models, is this wire here, with that little piece of black on it, it gets really frail, and as you can see, it's just hanging on by a thread, so of course, it shorts out, and it's probably not very good for the amp if it's kicking in and off. Now this, I don't actually have the speaker cabinet it came out of, it's a part that I came across, and so, anyways, there's no point in keeping it. I don't know if it's going to last, but whatever. I've got it, let's put it in. The big question is, are the bolt holes gonna line up? Mm. Looking like it's gonna. Keep our fingers crossed. thing that's interesting this design here is actually a lot more skookum because I don't know if you can see that very well but the design of it is actually a lot better it's braided wire so it doesn't uh, a lot more resistance to movement which is a smart design now I don't even know if this is the right power wattage rating for this cabinet but of course I looked up every single number I could find online that's written on the speaker and I could find absolutely nothing on it so it may last it may not but either way it was already broken so even if this only lasts for tonight it'll buy me some time and I can get the proper one next week hopefully Thank you. 
funny thing about doing this this way is <laughs> all the air tools and everything in there, but I don't know. It just seems like it's more work to get all that set up and drag it out here than it is to just do this for four bolts. Yes, in the grand scheme of things, probably would be quicker, especially considering I have to do all four wheels. But all right, so I'll show you guys a bit more of what I'm doing here. So what this is, it's your brake caliper, and you've got these slide pins, and then your brake pads are in here. We're gonna take this off. If it's gonna come nicely or not, I don't know. Oh yeah, there she goes. Put this guy over here for now. Try not to bend that fucking cable too much. So inside here, there is slide pins. And of course, living in the north. These ones aren't too bad, but they do seize up, so you're supposed to... And the other thing is, and I think what my problem is with this, is that these pads have these little sliders here. Of course, you can see they're rusted and dry, so the pads get wedged, and then they stick, and I've been noticing a smell of burning. And uh, when I get out of the car, I can see, or feel, my hand close to the rim, and you can feel it's really hot, so it seems to be... That's where the trouble is. The old Google YouTube searches to find out exactly what you're supposed to use to lubricate that stuff because brakes obviously get very hot and most lubricants would just burn up, which is pretty much useless. So, they have this stuff. Got it at the old Cambodian tire. So, I'll put some of the shmoo on there and see if she chooses. Look at that, we're still focused. This stuff is uh, purple. It's very thick. I don't know, I doubt it's very good for the old hands and especially with anxiety. I chew the shit out of myself. So, the old gloves. Guess I need something to pry those brake pads out of there, eh? That's the guy. too bad because I could actually get the ratchet on both bolts this time. That's one thing I've always wondered about. If you look, they put the, and I've seen this on different vehicles, obviously I've owned a lot of them, but sometimes they put the caliper at the back and then the front, or I think usually the fronts are always towards the front like that, I can't remember now, but I always wondered if that's, there's like a reason for that or if it's just, I'm sure there is, but well, it's beyond me. Anyway. Enough talking, back to her. Instead of fucking uh, slotted. Hmm. Kind of neat. Someone's moving. Don't 
check that out later. Huh. The old screw hole. I wondered about the brake job and thinking, wow, I didn't just take it to a shop. Well, you're right, I could have. And in fact, I did get a notice about it. And instead of giving these guys $249 of Canadian pesos to do the following, which, as you know, we did, service front brakes, service rear brakes, including park adjustment, parking brake is fine, service battery terminals, well, that's easy enough to do, inspect, 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 and check to drive boots for leaks. Well, having all that off, I have eyes, I can easily expect all those things, given I know what they are, and as for the drive shafts and boots for leaks, well, when we had the tires off, we could check that. Any cracks, obviously, we'd have to do something about it. So, something that may have taken a lot less, saved me a drive to Timmins, and not much money. And why not? You get to learn a life skill. That's the way I see it. If you can do something yourself and you've got the time, why pay someone else to do it? Learn a life skill, makes you more robust.